Hi everyone, this is Deb Tim and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you a very easy way I remove or switch out my substrate in my aquariums. Now yesterday during water change I did my 125, the parrotfish aquarium, and the mixed African cichlid aquarium. So I'm going to share that process with you. Now do you need to change your substrate? Um, how often do you change your substrate? What indicates substrate needs changing? Do you have to remove your fish? Is it a lot of work? Well, all of these questions will be answered, so please stay tuned. This is my 75 gallon mixed African cichlid tank. That is excluding the one little red devil who will be moving eventually. Today, I will be doing more than just my water change in this aquarium. I picked up some new sand and I'm going to show you how to switch out substrate the easy way. The substrate in this tank right now has probably been in here for over a year, I'm guessing. First of all, does your substrate need changing? Isn't vacuuming enough to keep it clean? You know, in my opinion, it's good to change your substrate from time to time. Although, unless it's visibly dirty after vacuuming or has a funky smell, it does not have to be changed. We change our substrate for many different reasons. Of course, if it's noticeably dirty. Or maybe you want a new look. Perhaps you want to go from sand to gravel or vice versa. Whatever the reason, I'm going to take you through my process in changing substrate in a very simple way. Look at the algae on the tumblers. Can you tell I removed the placos? They were getting torn up by my cichlids. I'm going to have to find a tougher algae eater. I was thinking maybe some snails. Now take a look at these beautiful little fry. Pretty good brood for two young moms. I took a photo and counted them. Do you want to take a guess? There are 121 babies in this two brood batch. That's pretty impressive. Sorry about the glare, but it couldn't be helped. I do my water changes in the morning, so we're going to have to deal with glare. I have removed all the decor. The only things remaining are the fish and the air stone, and now we're going to get working. For removing the sand, I simply use a five gallon pail. I purchased my pails at a restaurant outside of town. This one is from Beehive Honey. And here is my vacuum. It's a tube with a rigid tube stuck in the end in a friction fit. That works really well as a vacuum. Again, I ask you to forgive the glare. Moving the tube across the sand, it easily sucks up the substrate into the pail. There is no need to remove your fish. It's not upsetting or stressful for them. It doesn't take long, but I do have to lug buckets. That's the worst part of this um, process. Once my bucket is full, I pour off the water and the sand goes into a clean, empty garbage pail. When I have all the sand removed and in the garbage pail, I cover the sand with water and add bleach. I clean the sand this way. Once it's clean, I can use it again. Now, I don't always save it, but it's very handy to have some if you need it. I do not believe the fish have been traumatized in this process at all. This is a very easy way to remove substrate. Not the daunting task many believe it to be. You can remove gravel the same way, although you have to move the vacuum along a little slower as it can get clogged with the bigger particles. 
but I zip along and I think I maybe dump four or five pails, mainly because I don't let them get all the way full because I don't want it to be too heavy. But it does take me back to the beginning when I used to do my water changes by lugging pails. That was a job. Removing the substrate in this way is super easy. Look how well that worked. Again, I have to reiterate, there is no stress to the fish. Easy peasy. Everything is back in the tank and I'm just refilling it. The fish are looking curious as they're exploring their new substrate. And here we are, all finished. It's always such a great feeling when hard work pays off. I think it has. Although I don't feel this is a really big job, it's time consuming, but anything worthwhile takes time. In this hobby, we learn ways to save money, ways of doing things that make the hobby easier and more effective, and discover what works best for us, our tanks, and our fish. Now, when we do find something that works, it's important for us to share our knowledge so we can all benefit. So until next time, this is Deb Tim signing out. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day. I wish you a wonderful weekend ahead, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.